So, I've been playing this game for a while now, and I'm still just sort of moving around. I got a score of 47, 48. I haven't bought, actually missed the, the, the bananas yet, because, you know, let's face it, this game isn't very difficult. This game isn't very hard. And I think the one thing that we need to add to finish out this game right now is a concept of complexity in the game. Some sense of the longer I play, the harder it gets, right? I mean, if you think about any of the any video game, it starts out easy. They want you to succeed to get started with. And so you start with Wonky Kong, Donkey Kong, you start with Pac-Man, and it's not too bad. But after you clear a couple of levels, it starts to get harder and harder and harder. And so we want to do that here. What would make this game harder? Well, there's a couple of things that could make it harder. One would be to add multiple sets of bananas at some point. So maybe as I'm playing this, after a while, two sets of bananas start to fall, and I have to keep balancing the catching the multiple sets of bananas. That's actually a great addition. It's not the one I'm going to add right now. We're going to save the idea of multiple non-player characters for the next set of videos, uh, for the second video game we make together. I think that the, th the other way that, that is fairly obvious to make this game get harder as the game goes on is that those bananas start falling faster and faster and faster. Right, and the problem right now is that they they can you know, right now I have plenty of time to get under those bananas. Even if the bananas show up on the far left edge of the screen, um, I can run under them no problem. Um, so I need to get the bananas to start falling faster, not at the beginning, but as the game goes on. So let's add that complexity. Let me stop the game and let's add in the complexity. The the real idea is, if you think about this, is well, what makes the bananas fall at a particular speed? And if we go to the bananas, the falling of the bananas is all in this line of this block, this line of code right here. Change y by negative one, right? Negative one means it's not falling very fast. If I instead change this to negative two, notice the bananas are moving much faster now. Right? Not, not too bad. I can still move around. But negative two is certainly faster. Right? And if I take this up to negative three, it's going even faster. Right? And if I were to take them to negative 5, for example, let's try negative 5, now they're really starting to come at me pretty quickly. Okay? And so this is where this, the complexity of the game comes from, is changing that value. And so if I want to have this value change over time, how do I do that? Well, I could do it with a set of if conditions, but there's a better way to do this. If I want that to change over time, Gee, let me rephrase that. If I want this to vary over time, hint, 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 how would I do that? Well, that's exactly this. It's the idea of a variable. So I'm going to create a variable that I'm going to call speed. Right? We're going to create a variable called speed. Um, speed is going to go right in here. And I'm not going to display speed on the board once the game gets going, although I am going to leave it here for now. So in the places, everybody, for this game, I want to set the speed to negative 1, which is the, the, the simple the speed that we were starting with. But as the game goes on, I want that game to get bigger and the speed to get bigger and bigger, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And there's a whole variety of ways that you can do this. I think one of the easiest is simply this. Every time you catch a banana, not only should you change the score by 1, but you should get a little bit faster. Well, uh, in, just so that you can see it in, in action, let's change speed by negative 1. In other words, the speed starts at negative 1, and every time I catch a banana, it goes from negative 1 to negative 2, to negative 3, to negative 4, and you'll see that right now. So here's speed of negative 1. I can get under the bananas and catch them, no problem. Now we got a speed of negative 2. They're falling faster. Speed of negative three, they're falling much faster. Negative four, negative five, and you can see this gets out of control pretty quickly, although I'm getting lucky, I'm able to get to them. See, I can't physically get there fast enough at that speed. 
Oh, I missed, I missed it. Okay, game's over because I missed the, the, the game. Okay, so speed gets That's though really fast, really, really quickly. So rather than change by negative one, it's important to note that, that there's nothing actually with, with this that says that this has to be an integer. Uh, so I could do something more like uh, change by negative 0 0.2. And now the speed is negative one. Bananas aren't falling very fast. When I catch the bananas, it's going to go to negative 1.2 you won't even really notice that that's much faster. But slowly over time, negative 1.4, slowly over time, that's going to creep up on us, and we're going to get faster and faster and faster. And this turns out to be pretty good. And you can, again, you could try negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.3, anything that seems appropriate for the game and, and the students or the, the, the end players, you can do with that as a speed. Well, this is pretty good. We've actually got to a point now where we've got a game that I would be pretty proud to, to publish and to show kids to, to put on the Scratch website. It's very, very basic, but we've got this single set of bananas that falls from the sky. They fall faster and faster as the game goes on. I get a score. I get lives. I get three attempts to look at things, to catch things. And when, when I finally go to zero, the game ends. I think there are still some things that we could do to improve this game, but in the in in general, in the end, I think this is a great place to stop Wonky Kong for now. You're welcome to continue to play with it and try to improve it if you'd like, but in the next video, we're going to try a completely different kind of game to see if you can use some of the things you learned with this game and translate them, transfer them to a different scenario.